A month or so ago, I had been playing with a couple of very simple radio transmitters, the so-called 10-minute transmitter and the Michigan Mighty Might. While it was easy to tell that they were transmitting simply by listening on a nearby receiver, I wondered if it would be possible to observe their power output with a meter, similar to the way a cross-needle power SWR meter is used with higher power transmitters. Possibly I could make such a meter, so I ordered an SWR bridge kit that was described to be usable at 5 watts full scale. This small kit led me to a fun adventure in low power measurement, and this video summarizes key aspects of the project that I want to share. Low power operation, called QRP, is a special interest area in ham radio, and some operators take the challenge to a new level by limiting transmit power to the milliwatt range. The small SWR bridge is from kitsandparts.com. However, I have seen the same or nearly the same circuit from other sources, and the Kits and Parts webpage warns of fake versions. With so few components, all of which are readily obtainable, it is hard to see what would distinguish a real from fake version of the bridge. After assembling the bridge kit, I installed pin headers for RF input, RF output, and for the meter interface. Connections are probably meant to be soldered to the bridge, but I wanted to be able to switch RF connector types easily to test with different devices and also to connect an analog meter for an initial calibration or balancing, and then afterwards switch to the microcontroller interface for the rest of the project. Calibrating the bridge is straightforward. Notice the symmetry of the bridge. Input and output arms consist of identical components connected in the same way. The kitsandparts.com build instructions explain how to produce equal readings for the same power and load, whether connected in the forward or reverse direction. Each arm of the bridge has a variable resistor that can be trimmed to increase or decrease the value displayed on a DC microammeter for a given RF input and load. After adjusting for a suitable reading in the forward direction, connect the RF source to the output or antenna side of the bridge and a dummy load to the input. Then adjust the reverse trimmer until the meter displays the same value as it did for the forward connected power and load. The Arduino Nano uses the same Atmel microcontroller as the Arduino Uno, but with a different form factor. In the Uno, the ATmega328 is a 28-pin dual inline socketed package, while in the Nano it is a tiny SMT chip. Arduino analog to digital conversion depends on a reference voltage. Normally, or rather by default, it is 5 volts. If you don't supply an external reference voltage to the analog reference pin, the AD converts 0 to 5 volts to the 10-bit digital range 0 to 1023. However, it is possible to make the analog reference voltage a lower value, which causes that value to be used for the digital range. For example, if the Arduino's 3.3 volt pin is connected to AREF, then the digital value 1023 corresponds to 3.3 volts, not 5 volts. The analog reference can be made even lower, which facilitates the sensitivity of voltage measurement, so to speak. The WaveShare 2 inch color LCD module came from Amazon, $14.75 US including the connector and wires. This was an experiment that didn't go as well as anticipated. A different display module, one with a faster response time, would have been preferable. Before experimenting with the pixel addressable display, I had used it 16 by 2, that is a two-line text LCD. Before getting into the nitty-gritty of the circuit, I'll demonstrate how it works with both a QRP transmitter and with one whose RF output is less than a watt. 
This four-state QRP group Hilltopper transceiver has three BS-170 MOSFETs in the Class E final. For the demo, a 50-ohm resistive load is substituted for the antenna. The SWR should be 1 to 1. With the 12 volts DC bench power supply, the RF output reads approximately 4 watts. And if the power supply is set to 13.8 volts, similar to a car battery under charge, the transceiver's output reads at least 5 watts. The Hilltopper has a key down timeout of 5 seconds in order to prevent inadvertent damage to the MOSFETs. I hit this timeout a couple of times, at first not realizing what it was. The timeout can be reset by power cycling the transceiver, and there is another way, maybe the function button, but I've forgotten. The 10-minute transmitter circuit is found all over the internet. It is a single transistor, crystal oscillator, a bare minimum design, so to speak. I used a pin header in order to be able to test different transistors. The one that is currently plugged in is the common 2N2222A. I say common, it was common when discrete transistors were common, but now of course discrete transistors are seldom seen in consumer electronics, except in power amplifiers. The waveform out of the oscillator is ugly, with strong harmonics. However, a low-pass filter of appropriate design substantially suppresses harmonics and makes the RF look nice. This observation can be made quantitative by observing the waveform on an oscilloscope. Indeed, it is possible to show the amount of harmonic suppression using instrument's math mode, which computes the FFT and makes a nice spectrum view with decibel labels. My consumer-grade 200 MHz oscilloscope has a computer interface, USB. With this feature and software called EasyScope, it is possible to duplicate the oscilloscope screen on the computer and to capture the display using screen capture software. It does take a second or two for the oscilloscope to detect or measure the frequency and display an approximately correct numeric value. The oscilloscope's sampling rate is amazing, 1 billion samples per second, wow! To facilitate changing to the very low power, called QRP sub P, I installed a pin header for the analog reference, or AREF, and also added pins for 3.3 volts and ground, so that it would be possible to plug in different voltage dividers to make different reference ranges. To illustrate how this works, I will plug in a 1.1 volt AREF. The displayed readings are based on calibration measurements that were performed previously. The readings also depend on the bridge variable resistor settings. If the meter is always to be used for a very low power range, then it would make sense to revise the display scale of the graphic meter bars to reflect the range of measurement. Instead of 0 to 10 watts, make them 0 to 1 watt, or whatever range is appropriate. It is a simple matter to adjust the MPU sketch arithmetic to correspond to the chosen range of interest. For that matter, a switch or switches could be incorporated into the design to accommodate multiple power ranges. Finally getting meaningful numbers out of the 10-minute transmitter was great fun and in a way made the project worthwhile. I would be interested to hear from anyone who has undertaken a similar project or approached the same goal in a different way. Additional details about my project, including the Arduino script, can be found at the link that is shown on the screen. Thank you for taking time to view this video. Just as with tinkering, I've grown to enjoy putting these summaries together. Any feedback on how to improve these project videos would be greatly appreciated.